The original Ducati Scrambler became one of the most successful Ducati models, but three years since its release, Ducati seems to have realized that the Scrambler lineup needs to offer a bit more to draw in more serious, enthusiast-level buyers who might want to go retro and yet have access to all of Ducati's technological advancements. Upgraded to a 1079cc engine from the previous 800cc version, you guys might think that the new Scrambler packs in a serious punch, but it only gains 11 horsepower over the previous version, but it also gains 20 kg of curb weight, so that's not a huge improvement. But it gets better from there. The Scrambler comes with a 88 newton meters of torque, which is 20 newton meters more than the previous version, and it's coming in at 4750 rpm, which is significantly lower than the previous Scrambler. The Accessibility to the power and torque is there in the low and mid range and that is going to matter in the real world usage, especially in touring. The massive dual 320mm 4 piston caliper Brembos offer unbelievable amount of stopping power and it gets Ducati's advanced electronic package as well. Whereas the previous Scrambler only had ABS, this one gets cornering ABS, something new to Ducati ride by wire and a four stage traction control three riding modes along with three power modes you can turn off the traction control if you feel like that the scrambler 1100 comes in three variants standard special and sport i like the sport because it gets olin's fully adjustable shock absorbers both front and back and beautiful alloy wheels. They have a longer wheelbase as well with 1514 millimeters and the stance is kind of higher for the rider with a higher seat height and almost a supermoto like feel. The 15 liter fuel tank looks beefier and it's a theme that's recurring all through the motorcycle. The scrambler feels thick and beefy. There are only four plastic components on the entire bike and the rest is all beautifully crafted metal. The motorcycle has immense road presence and looks much better when you're standing right in front of it. So starting up for the first time on the Ducati Scrambler 1100S or the sport version. Sounds amazing even with the stock exhaust. Let's go. It's in the active mode which means the full power mode and uh, exhilarating performance over the previous version it has slight amount of power gain the previous version as far as i remember was 75 bhp and this one is 86 if you're wondering where that engine came from let me tell you a story i've always wanted to ride the old monster 1100 but now that bike's discontinued i probably will not get a chance to ride it in a way I feel content and peaceful riding this motorcycle because this has the same engine derived from the monster and I believe it's been detuned because I don't think that 1100cc monster would make 86 bhp of power so it's been detuned for more low and mid range power and that is why even on a higher gear if you're doing a city riding you would be quite fine riding uh, this because the torque will make sure you don't need to go through the gears that much which is there on other Ducati motorcycles so kind of more like a relaxed approach also the stance feels very high so wind blast will be more than the other bikes even more than the Ducati Monster 8 to 1 but it's a very comfortable ergonomics I really want to take a moment to talk about the seat it's a sweat finished very soft and blush at the same time not too soft uh, so it, it's it's the perfect seat for a long tour a six speed transmission and a slipper clutch but no quick shifter or anything on this bike they still want to be retro but this is modern retro because now we have a four stage ducati traction control we have abs three riding modes which lets you control the power the abs as well as the traction control in the active mode we have access to the full power and, and as you can see it's a lot of power uh, i would still say the power delivery even in the active mode is uh, 
you know manageable it's very manageable 86 PHP isn't bone shattering or nerve wrecking but it's still that power that you're going to enjoy I remember riding the, the monster 797 which was still 75 horsepower but I believe it was a bit lighter than this and it had a lot of go initial in and for that what we need to do is find a good stretch and downshift a little bit uh, we're gonna open up the throttle and let's see what this motorcycle can do because right now we are doing 99 on fourth gear which is like a decent cruising speed so what we're going to do is oh my god look at that and it, the, 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 the blinkers went on telling me to upshift and then it just went on this is like an amazing motorcycle now for the handling i would say yeah because of the higher stance this handling isn't as sharp and agile as the other motorcycles trust me this uh, uh, the seat height's gone up by i believe uh, 20 millimeters so yeah it, and with the wider seat you're probably going to feel like it's 810 but feels a bit more than that another thing is the previous scrambler the 800 series scrambler it's not getting discontinued so this is more like a bigger scrambler but they still are going to keep all of those options that i talked about in a documentary sort of video a few months back i think those bikes are still gonna be the most affordable and the most accessible ducati is accessible in the sense of not just economics but also because of the lower seat height because of the lesser amount of power some of the easiest motorcycles to ride and women riders prefer the scrambler icon a lot especially in the asian countries and that's going to remain because this bike is more of a power and even though the power bump is not that big but the torque bump is there the low and mid-range performance has improved and it has improved in such a way that this motorcycle is no longer just uh, a beginner bike it's it's just taken us a little bit of step in the enthusiast level now this riding position though i'm in a full leather suit this is more better written in a in a mesh jacket sort of a thing but it is comfortable and you add a touring screen a short one not a big one like the multi stratas and this bike's gonna get a hell lot comfortable and uh, and i think it's gonna do very good in tours considering that this is a pretty uh, comfortable riding position bike with with a nice seat and a lot of leg room since the bike seat height has improved the legs legs have been also improved but an 1100 cc engine i mean in a way you kind of expect more performance from ducati but think of it as a more retro kind of a way and and you know the vibrations and all that which is uh, considered the l twin shutter is lesser on this bike and i probably would say that is because of uh, the way they have tuned this engine braking let's test that out because this has some huge ass brakes oh did you guys see the braking power that was just the huge twin brembo discs up front i didn't even use the rear brake it did so amazingly well when i braked like that it did so amazingly well i am seriously impressed by the stopping power the moment i saw these discs i was like these are huge and ducati has always been the bike with exceptional braking power i mean i've braked on the monster 797 i've braked on the 821 and uh, the brakes have always been kind of like an overkill the earlier scrambler was kind of weaker in the brakes department and they fixed that as one of the major improvements if you ask me and if you ask me more than the power and the torque that's the improvement for me now we're gonna take it through a bit of cornering i am not a hundred percent comfortable on this since this is kind of getting the pirelli's mt60 tires which are on and off road tires and they do they do reasonably well in corners to be honest but this bike is uh, kind of high and that makes cornering you know you have to get used to the cornering otherwise it's not that easy to get adjusted to it's not the naked monsters uh, cornering feel which which i feel very very confident to corner on that motorcycle um
just listen to this bike just listen to the gargles and splits did you listen to it just just sounds amazing i'm going to stop talking for a while i'm going to let you guys listen to this really really nice i i i think you need to like step it back a bit go to the higher rpms and just listen to the soundtrack this is the ultimate joy and now that we have figured out that part we didn't really do the 0 to 100 i think this bike will do about that's a guess but 4 seconds is my guess we weren't doing a launch or anything because still this is a new bike and what i really find is now sixth gear 92 kilometers per hour my bike doesn't really do this it feels kind of shuddery uh, we maintain sixth gear reaching about well 9200 but that's just a 373 cc engine this is an 1100 cc motorcycle and sixth gear 100 cruising the bike doesn't give any impressions of knocking or anything and that's a big thing for those who really enjoy 100 to 120 kilometers per hour cruising because if you look here we are maintaining a really really low rpm we just just move it to the active mode so we if we want to change the power mode we can do that while we are there there's a long press on this enter button and now that active mode is blinking so with this we can go into journey mode now which is uh, for tour and then we long press it again and then ask for closing the throttle due to some reason i couldn't change the riding modes while riding it changed quite easily after i stopped and that was not similar to the monster 821 i later confirmed that it can be changed while you're riding all you have to do is long press then use the scroller to select the mode and then just do a short press to lock it in in figure figure this out but uh, we have activated journey mode so let's see yeah the power delivery right now is a lot smoother and that edgy harsh feel that was there uh, that i was enjoying a lot trust me because this is just 86 bhp when it's about 160 bhp that sport mode on the ducati 959 pane galley feels uh, not the sport i think it's the race mode or the track mode uh, i yeah that one feels kind of like over the top for the indian highways here actually i enjoyed the active mode but you know when you're touring 120 140 you really don't need that because this has a more gradual sweet sweet delivery to the, to it which which i think feels a lot better when you're when you're not looking to enjoy the sport riding but obviously if you really want to enjoy the sound because the, the, the sound also dies out when you hit the, hit the journey or or the, or the or the city mode urban mode some people ducati you know names it different for different bikes but basically the wet mode or the city mode is the first mode second is the journey or touring and third one with they have called this active some place it's called sport and the race bikes actually have sport which is the medium and race which is the highest so it's it's a little bit confusing so don't think too much about it i just now think that we are in the middle power mode the sound has been tamed the power delivery has been tamed and sweetened at the same time with some people like and some people don't like i personally like the active mode a little bit more because it was it was letting me play out with the throttle and the throttle response was way more like if you closed it in i felt it had more engine braking and if you opened it up it was more instantaneous whereas here it's it's acting more like a kawasaki bike with multiple cylinders you know uh, the power is delivering in in a same similar smooth smooth and out way <coughs> but the active mode is where i i get the usual ducati's uh, 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 uh. 
kind of like instant instant response and with 86 you really want an instant response that that feels amazing if you ask me so this is kind of like uh, lots of motorcycle talk <laughs> i'm sure tech heads uh, must be enjoying this but everyone else is like bored uh, what what's about moto vlogging what sandwich did you eat today roasted chicken and cheese i believe so that's that's more of a more what moto vlogging is these days being it keeping it casual but i would just get back to the motorcycle review or the first ride part so you've got a clock small console but it displays a ton of information here so if we just scroll through we can see that the range the uh, the temperature air temperature settings menu total uh, kilometers run trip meters and all of that you can scroll through that and uh, uh, when you go into settings you have other stuff so right now we're showing a, and and this right hand side is the rpm so a funny design of the rpm which increases lower side whereas on our, every other motorcycle is it is going this way it is also going the same way clockwise but bottom of the screen so a little bit different than what i'm used to doing power mode in journey is set to uh, medium and in city it is low now this is all very customizable so if you want uh, to have more traction control you can set the journey mode to have full power and then it will be as peppy as it is in the sport mode but give you a bit more traction uh, and uh, maybe even the abs mode changes a bit i'm not that sure but it's very customizable so suppose if you want less traction control but you like the medium power mode which is like the full power but the uptakes a little bit slower and the delivery is a little bit sweeter so if you want that you can do that as well uh, they give you the full option to customize the way you want it finally comes to the point of what this is competing against uh, it's competing against the bmw's r90 which is already a cult icon but also very expensive it's about 18 lakhs and this one the sport version is 13.5 lakhs on road i think that one is over 18 lakhs there's a standard version which is a little cheaper now the r90 is all about that styling and they have the single sided but dual exhaust option they also have that on this bike i personally prefer the dual exhaust that it comes with i think it makes this bike have that absolute snarl of an engine sound which i'm gonna you listen to that i love that engine sound and i'm not gonna tinker out with the exhaust configuration but if you ask me i'm probably gonna put a couple of turmy pipes but in the same configuration as dual under the seat i think this looks just classic it is still air cooled which is something of a bummer for me i really prefer having a liquid cooled bike in india and specifically good liquid cooling because just adding a liquid cooling doesn't always ensure that your engine's gonna be you know uh, cool and efficient so kawasaki has done an amazing job on liquid cooling and i have to give due credit for where they have, they have done it and ducati monster 821 has also done an extremely good job with the liquid cooling it doesn't heat up in the city i think this is going to heat up a fair bit because it's an 1100 cc air cooled engine not as much as the harley but still a fair bit so if you if you're just buying this for a lot of city riding do remember that that if if we were in europe this motorcycle would have been such a comfortable and nice bike to ride within within and the within the uh, city limits even because of the lesser temperature and even if you talk about the u-turn circle for such a big bike i would say yeah the handlebars do turn around quite easily and quite comfortably so that's obviously there that's a, that's a nice touch if you're gonna do some navigation into some tight spaces and um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed because this isn't, you know, it must be over a couple of hundred kilograms. But Ducati bikes, because of their trellis frame and all, always feels at least 20 kgs lighter when you're actually riding them. And that's something that I've always enjoyed about Ducatis. Even when you ride the 230 kgs Multistrada 1260, I mean, if you put it out of the side stand and just make the motorcycle straight, you can feel its weight. But while it's riding, you won't feel it. And that's uh, something that I've always enjoyed with Ducati motorcycles. The only thing the new Scrambler shares with its old 800 cc version are the pirelli's mt60 rs tires the brakes the suspension the electronics package
package, everything has been upgraded. Even the styling is all new and it looks very premium with excellent fit and finish. But power bump leaves something to be desired. The 1100cc could have produced much more power, especially since there are three power modes. With the active mode, they could have bumped it a bit more. I know Triumph Scrambler only makes 54 horsepower, but the BMW R90 has 110 horsepower and the Kawasaki Z900 RS makes 108 horsepower. And riding the 1100 Sport, I could feel that this bike is capable of much more speed. And even the engine feels that it can be pushed further with tuning. That is my only gripe with the Scrambler 1100, a small chink in the armor of an overall great motorcycle. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, uh, this first ride. We'd, we'd take this bike out to some cornering and we do do a full review. Stay tuned, stay subscribed for that because this is my friend's bike who doesn't want to be named, by the way. So thanks for watching and if you're a new viewer, please hit that subscribe button. You're an existing subscriber, that's great. Why don't you hit that bell button right beside the subscribe button? This is a great motorcycle and I hope you guys stay entertained and stay informed. This is Rahul and I hope to see you guys on my next video. Goodbye.